Lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Pretty good? Pretty good. Pretty good. We finally got some rain today. Yeah, we did. That was good. That was nice. Except uh, now I'm going to have to mow my lawn again. Yeah, welcome to the South. I know. <laughs> or the summer, anyway. Yeah. Well, nearly spring, summer. Yeah. Spring rains. It felt like summer today. It was warm. Um, I didn't, I, I wasn't outside much. No, I was outside enough to know it was hot. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, my big news is that I, my uh, dentist appointment didn't go as well as I'd hoped. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to get out the drill. Yeah. Yeah. Zzz. So, uh, I am destined for a root canal, apparently. Yeah. But I'm ready for this to be over, so. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Gonna have to get dates set up so we know when the podcast. Oh, yeah. I I guess that could be, um. It's gonna be a factor. You're probably not gonna <laughs> want to meet up the day that <laughs> you yeah. get the root canal done. Maybe if we do it early in the morning. Maybe I'll be fine by... Maybe. The time. I don't know how that... I, I've never had one before, so I don't know what to expect. I'm trying to remember. I don't think I've ever had one. I've had quite a few fillings, but I don't think I've ever had an actual root canal. Yeah. I mean, the other bit of my my last um, dentist appointment, which was fixing a filling, that went fine. Yeah. No problems there. Yeah. Filling's working again. Yeah. All is well. Yeah. Doesn't bother me. It's not cutting my tongue. Nothing. Oh, that's good. But this other bit that's been going on for like... A month and a half now, or two months, or whatever. Yeah. Oh well. I was really looking forward to a fix without a root canal. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I don't. I don't know if I've had one, or I don't think I ever have. I think I had a filling done that was almost needed a root canal, maybe. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Whew. Okay. And we're getting some thunder. I hope we don't lose power. Um. You hear that? Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> I'm closer to the window. <laughs> well, then you hear it too. <laughs> um, well, the good news is... Even if we lose power, we can continue. Yeah, we can continue to record. Yeah, in the need, dark. We don't need power. <laughs> Except you're not going to be able to read your wall of text you got over there. I don't, it's, not, it's not so bad. You said you wanted to talk about transgender stuff, and I have punished myself yeah. for a week reading... Like I, I swear this has made me worse of a person. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the reason we need to talk about it. Okay. Well, explain why you think we need to talk about it. So, I don't know. I mean, it just feels like, especially the past couple of weeks, because I mentioned it to you when I kind of became cognizant of it a week mm -hmm. or two ago, um, that, that every night on the news, there's some kind of story about some something going on with the trans community and how they're being oppressed and that there's this legislation. It just feels like there's this like bombardment coming from the news right now uh, over this subject. Yeah. And, um, and it's all garbage. Like it, it <laughs> that, and that's what bothers me is that so much of what they're, what they're pushing. Uh, and this is just being pushed on us. Um, in the same kind of way, like COVID was like same, same idea, just like inundate the news with it every day. The same thing with the gun stuff we were talking about last week. Like it just feels like we're being inundated with all of this stuff to push an agenda. Well, hasn't it always been true that the only way that you know that I'm a man is when I give you my pronouns? <sighs> no, <laughs> no, Michael, that is not the only way. <laughs> Like if that is that is a new phenomenon. Yeah, it it really is. And I mean, I would venture that a lot of the people that are pushing this five years ago wouldn't have agreed with that. Agreed. No, I wholeheartedly yeah. agree. Um, it's 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 just a strange time we live in, and it it's really. I mean, as, so let me just kind of put my cards on the table here, mm -hmm. as far as this goes. Sure. Because. Like, I don't care what you do. Like, if you want to dress like a woman, say you're a woman, like, I don't care. Like, I mean, do what you want to do, do what makes you comfortable. It's not going to bother me. That's not really where my issue is here. My issue is where it's being pushed on the children. Mm -hmm. um, that's where that's where my lines are at. And that's what part of what makes me so irritated watching the news because it's not the 
30 year old man that's decided he wants to be a woman that's all over the news. It's the children in school that are needing gender affirming care. And it's, we've got to, we've got to let the children do this and do that. Like that's where my problem is. Yeah. Um, well, and even if it's your kid and I, Hey, because I've always been an advocate for, you know, raise your kids the way you want to, like they're your kids, you know, do what you want to do, but I'm sorry. Like this borders on child abuse. And I use the word bordered like, Sparingly, because I, I think it actually is child abuse. Like if you're letting, if you're, if, cause the argument would be, well, they're letting their kids do what they want to do. But the truth is, is this being pushed on these kids through the parents? Mm-hmm. Um, because the parents want to score some kind of social, whatever, you know? Yeah. Social points. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and I don't even understand why that's a, that that's a plus, but um, well, okay. So there's a, there's a couple of things like, I've got some history, I've got some science, and I've got some cultural commentary. <laughs> so you, you, you've got you got us loaded with stuff to talk about. I, I well, I kind of wish I didn't. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, like I say, I mean, it really, like I say, I kind of laid it out. But like, I mean, I truly believe you can do whatever you want to do. But that's where the the kids is where it gets me, um, and that's that's where where the the issues are being pushed. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's start with that gender dysphoria is a real thing. Yeah. It, it exists. Um, it is real, but it is exceedingly rare. So I'll ask you, so does it exist for an eight-year-old? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so historically speaking, um, gender dysphoria starts with very young. I yeah. mean, like, you know, three to five Okay. Even like starts very young. Yeah. Um, it's almost always, uh, natal or, uh, biological males. Yeah. Um, and it's about one in 10,000. Okay. So, um, you're essentially talking about like one in 10,000 very young men will have a, a, form of gender dysphoria. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, roughly 70% would outgrow it yeah. at some point. Actually. And I think importantly, um, often, uh, it, with the onset of puberty, that would make sense. All right. Um, I think it ends up being a, about half of half of them end up just being gay. Yeah. I mean, when you were kind of laying that out, that's kind of what I envisioned in my head. Mm-hmm. Is like the kid that you know is into pink and is into the, just the girly acting kid. Yeah, that's just gay. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, now, there's been a, a second type of gender dysphoria that has been. I'm going to put scare quotes around recognized. Okay. Yeah. More recently. Yeah. Which is, um, they're calling sudden onset gender dysphoria. Okay. Or acute onset gender dysphoria, yeah. um, affecting, uh, mostly adolescent girls. Yeah. All right. Um, this is new. Yeah. And different. And d- I mean, like, definitely doesn't fit the t- typical pattern of what has been gender dysphoria. In the past. For decades, yeah. Yeah. Um, and s- seems to be more of a social contagion rather than a legitimate gender dysphoria. Yeah. Uh, and that's evidenced by um, the fact that many of these girls that transition regret that decision, and, and many of them actually detransition if they can, or yeah. as best they can later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with the name Kira Bell? I'm not. Okay. So uh, Kira Bell is kind of at the center of a, um, of a major lawsuit in the UK against the National Health Service. Really? Yeah. Um, so she was... Um, huh, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can explain this and really give it the kind of gravity that it deserves. But she... Um, 
her parents split when she was like five. Uh, her mom sunk into alcoholism and was kind of distant. Her father, although he was, uh, he was a U.S. Um, armed services, but he stayed in England after the divorce and, um, he was even more distant. Like she really didn't have much contact with him. Yeah. Um, she had issues with depression and anxiety and, um, she, uh, with the onset of puberty started, um, struggling with her sexuality. She had like some homosexual desires. She felt herself being attracted to women and that wasn't really accepted, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so she went to, uh, and then somebody asked her, well, her mother, I guess to start asked her, if she wanted to be a boy. And she, the way she describes it is she was like, I didn't know really that that was an option, but that sounded great. <laughs> yeah. um, and she had been a tomboy growing up, but uh, puberty had kind of changed. Like she, her friends were mostly boys, but yeah. puberty kind of strained those relationships. Um, and uh, so she was kind of isolated as well. And yeah. Um, and then she went and uh, her, I guess her father's new girl um, asked her the same question and then she started, she became intent on it. Yeah. Um, so she goes to the gender clinic, um, at, uh, I guess it's Tavistock. Tavistock. Um, and at 15 and, um, they put her on puberty blockers and then eventually testosterone therapy. Um, and then she had a double mastectomy when she was like 20. 20, I think yeah. somewhere in there. And then sometime after that, she was like, this hasn't worked. Yeah. Like, this is not my problem. I'm not happy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and while the idea of being a, a boy was like really, um, like was really comforting to her as an adult, she was reevaluating and, and realized that the, the problem wasn't that she was in the wrong body. In fact, I, okay, yeah. so I, let me, I'm going to read her own words. Okay. Um, she said, uh, when I was seen at the Tavistock Clinic, I had so many issues that it was comforting to think I really had only one that needed solving. I was a male in a female body. But it was the job of the professionals to consider all of my comorbidities, not just to affirm my naive hope that everything could be solved with hormones and surgery. Yeah. And so, I mean, as it turns out, she's, she's a gay woman. Yeah. And, um, and what they're finding more and more, cause I read part of the, um, the court case about this is it was like too long and I had discovered it too late. So I couldn't really go through. I mean, yeah, I don't know if I even really want to read all of it, honestly. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, some of the discovery in the court was that, uh, even the gender clinic itself, um, was admitting that their treatments weren't helping, uh, in terms of the, the psychological state of the people that they were um, putting on puberty blocks blockers and starting the medical transition process, yeah. um, that, uh, that claims that they were making about um, the use of puberty blockers and so forth wasn't well understood. Uh, like, or that I guess there wasn't, there wasn't data to support the claims that they were making. That's yeah. probably the way I should say it. Yeah. Um, now puberty blockers themselves have been used for a long time. Um, they, uh, can treat some, um, adult issues, endometriosis, like things like that. Okay. Um, or they can be used to treat that. Um, most commonly they're used in precocious, uh, puberty, which, which occasionally, um, mostly women, but sometimes men, uh, puberty will, uh, will onset when they're like four five, six years old. Oh, wow. All right. So they, um, they use it to delay puberty until a more appropriate time to go yeah, through puberty. I was going to say, that's kind of a, that would um, be horrible. <laughs> now they're really, really well studied in that position. So you yeah. put the child on puberty blockers till a more appropriate age for puberty. You take them off the puberty blockers. They experience normal, normal puberty at that point. Yeah. Um, the way they're using I mean, them that now. Ma that makes a lot of sense. Like, I mean, you don't want your four year old going through puberty. Yeah. Like, 
Understood. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way they're using them now to treat this trans transgender uh, stuff is not well understood. Yeah. Um, so there's the claim out there. You see it all the time. Well, you just put them on puberty blockers so that they have time to think about it and, and determine if they're yeah, really I, the, there. The term and, I've heard a bunch is put a pause on it. Yeah. 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 Um, and the, you know, you can take them off at any time and they'll resume normal puberty, but that doesn't seem to be true. If you block puberty as it starts. Yeah. Um, in well, a normal aged person, I was going to say at the age you're supposed to have it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it can, you know, it, it can create some problems yeah. um, at that point. And especially when it's followed up by a hormone therapy, it's really irreversible at that point. Yeah. Um, and it almost, uh, almost invariably results in infertility as well. Yeah. But I, I think the, the main issue here, well, okay. So <laughs> let me throw out this little factoid and then I'll continue on that. All right. Um, in 2007, there was one gender clinic in the United States. Okay. Now there's more than 300. Who? All right. This there's a huge boom in this. Um, Planned Parenthood uh, in the U.S. Now, you know there are restrictions that vary from state to state, um, but they can potentially give testosterone treatments to women on the first visit. Really? Yeah. Um, without parental knowledge, depending on the state. Wow. Um, and uh, to children as young as 15, again, depending on the state. Yeah. Um, now, Kira Bell in the center of this court case, she, they, the high court in, um, in the UK put some restrictions on how the gender clinic could do this. Like, how old what kind of requirements were necessary, et cetera. So yeah. um, essentially they restricted uh, puberty blockers to children 16 and under that they needed a, um, a court approval to do it. Yeah. Um, that has since been appealed and reversed to some degree. Now they can still give puberty blockers to children under 17, but it needs, uh, they say primary carer, which I think is there as I, That's I the gather guardian. is their term for parent or guardian yeah. um, approval yeah. uh, in order to do it. Um, but still what, what they're finding it, like I came across all these testimonials from um, people both in the U S and the UK that uh, had worked at, at gender clinics that were coming out and saying, no, there's a real problem here. Yeah. Um, and primarily what they're saying is that the real problem is that most of these girls, um, are actually experiencing other kinds of psychological issues, yeah. uh, anxiety, depression, um, the, uh, uh, autism, um, yeah. all kinds of other things. And they're being sold that, well, their problem all comes down to this gender issue, like Kira Bell was saying in the quote that I read. Yeah. Um, and that they can solve all of these issues by transitioning. But they're not taking into account the psychological state of these girls to begin with. Yeah. Um, they're, not, they're not giving them enough psychotherapy before they start them on an irreversible path. path yeah. Yeah. To, to change, to transitioning. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. And they're, they're doing it to like younger and younger people. Yeah. I mean, the, the stuff I've been seeing just on segments here and segments there, I mean, we're talking eight to 10 year olds. Like, I oh, mean, that's really nuts. Like I, I didn't come across any of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, there, and that, that's not even so much like the puberty blockers yet, but I mean, the the argument is well my my kid's trans and and my little girl wants to play on the boys team or vice versa mm -hmm. and that type of thing and it's it's all of these little like um what do you call those like the emotional pieces that the, that they do on the news like the segments or, oh yeah, i don't remember what the term i can't is. think of the term yeah um mm -hmm. But human it's those, interest. Human interest. Yeah, it's yeah, all of yeah. these little human human interest stories on these. And then at the end of kind of the segment, they'll cut it. Oh yeah, and in Tennessee they're doing blah 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 to take this 
these rights away and this, that, and the other thing. Well, that's a dangerous thing too. Um, Elizabeth Warren said something about, uh, you know, the right to transition. Yeah. Um, I, I don't remember if she used exactly those terms, but, but that's like a scary path to go down because if you start making it a human right yeah. for these children to transition, then, um, it creates a legal pathway to take children away from parents who don't approve. Exactly. Uh, which is terrifying. Well, and even like what you were saying a few minutes ago, where um, like where like Planned Parenthood in these places can can give these drugs out without the parents' consent, like that's absolutely mind boggling to me. Um, well, like I said, caveats there. That, that I understand. Depending that's not, on ages, depending on states. Yeah, I understand that's not like a blanket thing, mm-hmm. but the fact that it could happen anywhere, at least in this country, yeah. is. I mean, it's a problem by me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I have a problem with that. Mm. Well, see, the crazy thing to me is um, the idea. Okay. So what they're saying is that these children know who they are. Yeah. That all you're doing is you're giving them the opportunity to be their true selves. Yeah. You know, um, anybody who says that, uh, you know, early adolescence, um, or teens know who they are, don't remember themselves being that age. <laughs> or have never had kids. Okay. I, yeah. I, I've never had kids, so I don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, just saying, like, I mean, I've watched my kids grow up. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember what they're saying that then versus now and that type of thing. Like, yeah. they grow out, they go through phases and they grow out of stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember enough of my teenage years to know that I had no idea who I was. Yeah. Like, I was somebody different every few months. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I didn't have any questions ever about what gender I was, but um, <laughs> but you know, well, that's because like, nobody. I, well, that's because nobody ever asked you the question, Mike. That that I mean, there's more truth in that than no. you want to admit. <laughs> no, I think. no uh, there is. Um, like, yeah, you know, I uh, I mean, like, I was always pretty confident in my sexuality and like who. I I mean in who I was and on in, in the barest sense, but like certainly like the kind of person I was trying to be changed. Yeah. Like many times. Yeah. Um You have the goth phase. I never really had a goth phase, but I had that that neo hippie thing for a, a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um and uh I don't know, but there were a lot of things like I, I there were a lot of events that occurred in my life that changed who I wanted to be. Like, I remember like kind of reflecting back on some things that I had done and going, man, Mm. that's not, that's not the person that I want to be. Like, I, I, I I remember very distinctly a a moment when I was in college, when I realized how manipulative I was Yeah. to other people, (laughs) (laughs) to other people. Yeah. Like, and taking advantage. Yeah. Like just, you know, I, I, just being manipulative, convincing people that that yeah. my idea was their idea yeah. to get what I wanted and, you know, th- things like that. And I, like I remember, I mean, it didn't happen exactly at the time, but I remember over, you know, within a couple of years of one of these, a specific event of doing that. Yeah. Um, going, man, like I'm a terrible person. Yeah. And this is not the person that I want to be. Yeah. Um, and like really changing that behavior in my like life. Like making a note of it. Yeah. Like I'm going to do better going forward. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to use people. Yeah. Like th- they are. <laughs> yeah. People are not tools. Yeah. People are not a means <laughs> to an end. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so like a lot of things changed for years in that time. Now, like, it seems to me, and you know, the data doesn't support this either, but this has been my general observation, yeah. um, is that uh, women start puberty younger than men, um, but stay in it longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I don't mean that just in, the, in terms of the, uh, the physical development. And a, as I understand it, actually, like even the, like the actual changes in the brain that occur through puberty, like yeah. the structure of the brain, yeah. um, it ends earlier in women than it does men. Oh, really? Yeah. But it has, it has been my experience that men kind of figure out who they want to be earlier. 
Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. And, it, you know, yeah. I guess your experience may vary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. But but my experience has been that most men um, have figured out, like, the person that they are and the person that they're, that they're going to be um, in their early 20s. Yeah. Like, I don't know, 21, 22, somewhere in there. Not yeah. to say that they're the final person or that they're mature or whatever, but the, like, the difference in maturity doesn't really affect the personality so much. Yeah. Um, whereas women seem to figure out who they are a little bit later, like more in their mid twenties, 24 to 26, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, like I said, that's only, that's observational data though. Like that's there. I don't have, I don't have studies to support that, but that's just been generally my experience. The point here though, um, is that the idea that these, that these young kids know, (laughs) <laughs> and it shouldn't be questioned. Yeah. Like what gender they are is completely ridiculous to me. It's asinine. Yeah. Um, and, uh, like, so I remember when I was studying anthropology, like I, I did mostly biological anthropology, but there weren't enough biological anthropology classes to fill a schedule, yeah. um, at Georgia state. So I took some culture, cultural anthropology as well. Yeah. And I, I remember, and this is, in the late nineties, I guess. Um, Back when early, everything was so much simpler. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, and early two thousands, because I, I got my degree in two thousand three, I think. But uh, I, I remember the discussion in classes about um, sex being biologically determined and gender being uh, socially determined, culturally yeah. determined. Yeah. And and this is something that you hear a lot. Now I was going to say this, this is this is a yeah very common theme. But but the concept that they've taken, like the the root concept, they've bastardized to a great degree. Now, what was meant when we were when we were saying that in anthropology um, was that that gender roles, yeah, are culturally determined because yeah. there wasn't really a universal except in that. Um, women bear children. Gave birth, yeah. Yeah, that that was really it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, because there are cultures where women are the hunters and men are the foragers. There are um, plenty of cultures where the men take care of the kids uh, after birth, and you know, women. I yeah. mean, so, so all of these roles are just kind of yeah arbitrary. Yeah, the the roles are culturally de- determined, but the but the actual gender isn't. Yeah. Well, the, but, I mean, like you're still men you or women. To, but you just you, have different what you responsibilities. For, yeah, but what you're forgetting is they didn't have the technology to control yeah. that. And, and I think that uh, is a factor I, in this, by the way. Like the fact that we do have the ability to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's well, but what we're finding more and more is that we don't really, because even <laughs> these women or men that transition to the other side, they find that they they're not really the other thing. Yeah. Like yeah. men who transition to women find that they're not really women. Yeah. I mean, like they're, they're a simulacrum, you know, but they're not, they're not yeah. really what they didn't become a woman and they're realizing that. Yeah. Um, and the same in the other direction. Yeah. Uh, in fact, that's this girl, Kira, she spoke about that specifically as an adult. She is like, you know, yeah. I look like a woman or I look like a man. I could act like a man. Um, but I wasn't really a man. I like, I still wasn't a man. Yeah. And and the idea that there's no real difference between these things is just completely, completely absurd. Like I did forensic archeology span for a little while. Yeah. Forensic anthropology. Yeah. Um, to this day, and I'm like way out of practice, Yeah. but to this day, you can hand me a human skull and, and I can tell you with about 90% accuracy, whether it's a man or a woman, you can gender it. <laughs> yeah. I can gender it just based off of the shape. There are yeah. inherent differences. Yeah. Um, I, I actually came across a study while I was going through this cause this is kind of interesting actually. Um, is that like, not all of it is behavioral that, uh, there are differences in, um, the ability to throw Yeah. in like toddlers yeah. between men and women. Yeah. Um, Males, uh, like three to five years old, before there's really been that much training in any way, yeah. um, throw farther, faster, and more accurately than females, yeah. same age. Yeah. 
There's, Just, there are differences in the shoulder. There's differences in the forearm. There are physical, like real physical differences that you cannot overcome. Yeah. yeah. Th- they start really early. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like the idea that you can just be the other thing if you feel that way is, I I don't know. It just, it, well, and that kind of brings us to the whole sports thing anyway, Mm -hmm. where with the, um, I don't know her name, his name, whatever that the swimmer that Leah Thomas, is that, is that Leah Thomas? Well, it's a swimmer. I don't know. There's, I think there's more than one, but yeah, I mean, there probably is. There's one that I see in all the memes. (laughs) The one that you put the meme up of that (laughs) I laughed at, out la- like I almost fell off my chair laughing at that was Leah Thomas. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean that's just ridiculous. The fact that we're gonna have men competing in women's sports, like I mean, yeah. we we separate the sports out for a reason. Yeah. I mean, because if you want the the sports to be entertaining, like you have to watch the men play and watch the women play. Like they're just yeah. If 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 you enter, I mean, you can integrate them if you want, mm-hmm. but then they're just gonna all be men. Yeah, um, so uh, I was talking with somebody at the office the other day. We are talking about tennis. Yeah. Now, the the difference between the men's game and the women's game is huge. I'm sure. And so, but like, you know, people go back to that. There was a um, a match between uh, a, like an over-the-hill man and a woman in her prime in the 70s or something, and the woman won. Yeah. Um, and so there's like, ah, well, you know, there's not really a difference, but you can just look at the, um, the speeds. So men's service speeds, like get up to like 135, 135 mile an hour serve. And the, the very best, uh, women like, um, Serena Williams or whatever that like hit the hardest. Yeah. They get up to like 110. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I I mean, there's a huge difference. There's a gap there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, uh, John McEnroe got in trouble cause he always does. Yeah. I think it was John McEnroe said something about that. Um, that Serena Williams, who at the time was the best women's player in the world. I don't know if she still is. Yeah. Um, couldn't beat, uh, one of the men in the top 200. Really? He said, and yeah. he, like, he took a lot of flack for this yeah. and somewhere along the way, she actually played a guy who was like. 198 or something like that. <laughs> he was at the bottom. She, yeah. yeah. She was gonna, she was gonna prove yeah. She lost 6060. Yeah. And came off the court and she was like, I just can't believe how hard he hits the ball. Yeah. I like, mean, yeah, <laughs> there's differences. Well, I mean, yeah. it, and it can't be overcome by hormones. Yeah. And it can't be undercome. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by hormones either. Like changing yeah. the hormones to, to transition from male to female doesn't take away those advantages. Those abilities. Yeah. Exactly. So like, even if you do it really early, even if you do it pre puberty, cause like I said, the throwing thing, like there's just difference in the physiology and like yeah. that throwing thing arises as soon as they're able to throw. Yeah. I don't know. We got a lot of decisions to make in this country, how we're going to do things, especially when it, I mean, just the sports thing in general. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. you're, you're talking about, I mean, basically you're just ruining women's sports by letting these people play. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that are being ruined here. Um, I, I, I want to, you know, and come back around to that. Um, I don't want to let the, the term gender affirming care es- escape, oh, escape our, us. Yeah. But, um, I, there's like a couple of things that are being ruined. The, the women's sports thing. Now I, I kind of wonder if this isn't a third category. Yeah. Um, some of this, you know, so you have the like the traditional gender dysphoria that's mostly male starts really early in life. Um, mm-hmm. You have this arising social contagion among adolescent girls of gender di- uh, of acute onset gender dysphoria. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of wonder if some of the sports stuff is people that are just trying to take advantage of the situation. I mean, and, I think, and I'm I, certain that like things like the prison stuff that they're doing in California and like some yeah. of these places out West, I think Washington, Oregon also, yeah. where you can, as a male prisoner, you can claim to be a woman and get transferred to a woman's prison. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, wow. I hadn't heard of that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There's some crazy stuff going on. Like, like, you know, that is insane. Like, why wouldn't you do that? Like, I would yeah. much rather be in a women's prison than a men's. Yeah, well, and you, you talk about the, the like the prison rape thing. Yeah, like exactly. that gets a whole lot worse. And suddenly, in this situation, yeah, too. right. Um, 
So, oh, so you've had these uh, issues arising of women in prison um, being raped and getting pregnant. Wow. Yeah. Because yeah. there are men because, among them. Yeah. Wow. That, I anyway. mean, that, that, that blows my mind. Like I'm, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's nuts. Completely nuts. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Gender uh, yeah, we got, we got, I mean, we, we got to the accept them the way they are. Is that it's, uh, well, you know, it's also kind of an attack on gay culture because it's, or, you know, or homosexuality in general, because you're saying that if you're a man, you're attracted to men, you're not really a man, you're uh, a, a woman in a man's body and vice versa. Yeah. Um, like co- totally discounting that you can be homosexual, which it turns out most of these, not even most, roughly half of these people are. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you're, um, destroying the idea that you can be who you want to be really. So you're, you're, you're actually like doing something that these, the groups that are supporting this idea have fought against for decades, which is the, the idea of that there's a right way to be a man and a right way to be a woman. Yeah. Right. Like you're, <laughs> right. <laughs> you're, you're taking away the, the individuality of, um, of being able to act differently than the typically male role or the typically female role. Yeah. Like you're, you're taking away the, um, the, uh, tomboy, um, and the, you know, sensitive effeminate guy, yeah. um, who may in fact be hetero and cis yeah. and <laughs> like, yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, but you're, you're kind of like reinforcing the stereotype of what the, what you're supposed to act like as a male or as a female. Yeah. By saying if you don't act in that way, well, you're actually the other thing, just in the wrong body. Then I got some pills for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and there's that's a big part of it too. I mean, these people are worth a lot of money to well, the medical industry. And I'll tell you, as as sad as it is to say this, I I think that's where a lot. I mean, I always say this: like, follow the money, go back to the money. If you want to know the root of a problem, or if you want to know the reason for something, always follow the money. And I mean, it, there's something to be said about exactly what you just said. These people are worth a fortune to the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah. Because um, if you stay transitioned, yeah, you're on medication the rest of your life. Exactly. And that's big money for these companies. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's something else to be said for the fact that when you watch these evening news and all of this like mainstream media, they're all bought and paid for by these people. Like half the ads, over half, on any of those channels, it's all pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. I mean, these, these companies are bought and paid for, which I don't know. Like I say, it's just there's something to be said about that. Well, I, I think that there, you know, there's a lot of the useful idiots to yeah. use that term. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I just thought of... Uh, so I had a, a math professor when I was in high school who was talking about speaking publicly and um, and just saying like, you know, in terms of convincing people that you know what you're talking about. And it, the phrase he uses, um, use big words like mayonnaise and transmission. <laughs> yeah. That always stuck with me. Use big words like mayonnaise and transmission. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I, I'm sorry. I got totally distracted from whatever it was I was going to say. Yeah. Um, well, I think that there's a lot of useful idiots in, in this. Um, because I, I, there's that part of it where I think there's just a lot of money to be made by the pharmaceutical industry from and the medical yeah. industry generally from from these people, um, and but I think that there's a lot of like I think most of those people working at those gender clinics and so forth are really oh, no. well-meaning people. They're they're believers, and I'm not saying that they're bought and paid for by the pharmaceutical companies too. I think mm-hmm. you're absolutely right. They're just kind of pawns in this. Yeah, but they've drank the Kool Aid. Yeah. Um, the, uh, well, let's hit gender affirming and then I'll, I'll, um, cause there's another aspect of this that I think is taking advantage of useful idiots as well. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, another agenda at work. Yeah. Um, but okay. So I, I have actually been really bothered by just the phrase gender, gender affirming, affirming care. care. Oh my God. So we were talking about the other night, but I mean, once again, if you if you watch the mainstream news just one segment, you're going to hear it. Like it's going to be yeah. that. Yeah, that that is the word they use. Well, um, first off, most of the rest of the developed world has moved away from this. 
Yeah. Not the United States, but most like a lot of Europe has moved away from the gender affirming care. Yeah. Um, I don't know paradigm. I yeah. guess you'd say or protocol. Yeah. Uh, and moved back to a, like um, a kind of a wait and see approach. Yeah. And because most people grow out of it, move past it. They don't. They don't yeah. need transition. And in fact, transition in the long term is far more damaging than the alternative. Yeah. Um. But like this phrase, gender affirming care, it just like to me, it harkens back to the Patriot Act or Freedom Act or the um, every time. What was the the fighting inflation? The, the Inflation Reduction the, Act. Yeah, Inflation Reduction <laughs> Act. Like this yeah, is another this is the phrase. Inflation that, Reduction Act. Then we're going to print all this money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, gender affirming care is another one of these phrases that describes exactly the opposite of what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like gender affirming care, wouldn't that mean that if you came into the office as a biological female, we're going to affirm that? Yeah, we're going <laughs> to remind you. Like the yeah, but no, what it is is it's exactly the opposite. It's yeah. uh, if a, a biological female comes into the office and says that they think they're male, you go with it. And yeah. and this is such a weird thing because like this is the opposite of the way the medical industry has functioned at least in the time that I was a part of the medical industry. Yeah, because I, don't they take some kind of oath like isn't it like a do no harm thing? Well, there's that. But what I was going to say is that like when we as an EM, um, uh, yeah, as an EMT, as a person on an ambulance, yeah, um, when we transported patients that were. Uh, that had psychological disorders. Yeah. Um, that were prone to fantasies and hallucinations and things like that. Mm. We were told over and over and over again, don't play into their fantasies. Don't yeah. don't affirm this. Like, yeah. your your part of your job was to try and bring them back to, to reality. reality. Yeah. Yeah. And and not to indulge this. Now, I will say. That working on an ambulance, sometimes like you only have sometimes them. that's easier said than done, right? Well, I was gonna say since you only have them, like you're only treating, so to speak, yeah. them for like ten minutes or fifteen minutes at a time, yeah. rather than argue with them, yeah. it was sometimes easier to just go with it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we're running from that dragon; it'll never catch us. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. The, the the penguins in this bus are in the front. Yeah, yeah I exactly. Mean, whatever. Um. So, <laughs> yeah, I see your shirt. <laughs> uh, so, like you know, but but the the protocol was that you didn't indulge the fantasies, you didn't yeah. indulge the hallucinations. You you, you you're know, always you, trying to reel them back in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I don't know why that's that's changed exactly in this particular case. Oh, and I wonder if it has changed in other cases as well. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder if they're still telling people that about you yeah. know people with psychological disorders. Yeah. Well, other people with psychological disorders, because yeah. frankly, I think that this is. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we've made a pretty strong case for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Not in the medical field anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've only been reading and it, it's just it's yeah. just depressed me. <laughs> yeah. Well, but it does go back to what I was saying a minute ago. I mean, um, don't these people take an oath to do? I mean, I thought that was part that, of it. That's was, part of the, I mean, know? that's the, like the, uh, the summary of the Hippocratic oath. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I, I don't think that that Hippocratic oath means anything anymore. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if they still do it. I, I don't know. I'd be interested to find out. I could find out. Yeah, I, I would too. Um, I mean, it's, it's long, but yeah. the, I mean, but that's that's a, a huge aspect of it is that you are to endeavor to do no harm. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can't help it. I mean, well, yeah. like things go wrong. Yeah. But, um, but the this, idea this is seems that the to goal be intentionally here, doing harm, though. Well, I, you know, again, useful idiots that kind of thing. I, I think that there's a lot of. Um, I think that a that an important aspect of this is activists infiltrating the medical system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, the, it's that the medical system, like everything else these days, has become politicized to a great degree. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that that's, uh, I think that that's actually a big part of it. I don't know that the doctors... Recognize I, yeah, what they're doing. I mean, I think that I think that there are there are almost certainly doctors out there that think that they are taking the course of doing the least harm. I mean, you yeah. hear 
people out there, um, including doctors, making the case that uh, forcing somebody to undergo um, puberty in a body that doesn't match their psychology or whatever yeah. is harmful in and of itself. Yeah. I actually heard um, <laughs> on the No Agenda show, um, I heard a TikTok clip where uh, somebody, you know, this was an activist, not a doctor, but um, was was talking about how, uh, what if what if we did the opposite? What if we, um, what if we forced cis people to uh, to take hormones of the other side and force them to go through puberty as as the um, gender that they don't believe that they are? You know, wouldn't that be cruel and so forth? And this is the same thing. Yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, I can identify a real obvious difference there. <laughs> Um, is that the, the people that are like in one place, you have to add additional chemicals to make things happen. Yeah. And on the other side, you don't. <laughs> right. <laughs> like this is a yeah. real, this is a significant difference whether you think so or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I don't know, but I, I think that the other agenda that, that needs to be uh, at least considered in this is that, um, and you, you, this is just the new one, like the newest thing, I guess, but um, you're creating another victim class. You're creating another oppressed class yeah. um, that, that to, to feed into a political radicalization um, and with the goal of some kind of social revolution. Yeah. Like if you can make people feel that the system is against them, then it's much easier to convince them to rise up against it. Yeah. And I think that that that's part of the goal here. Yeah, um, is to create a, a create a new victim class, a new class of people, a new oppressed class that feels like they need to bring down the system. Well, you're definitely working on it as far as how many of these people are going to be out there in the next twenty years, well, or that are going to be a victim of this in one way or another. Yeah. Um, because I do That's think, true. I do think these people, at least in the end, will consider themselves victims. These people. <laughs> yes. I use that word. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say he or she. I'm confused, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Like some of the things when I was reading about this, like I came across, like it was hard to read a lot of these articles because you would end up with sentences in it. Like when he started his period, <laughs> And you're like, wait, what? Like it creates this dissociation, like in your own mind yeah. as you're reading it. Like I have to go back and reread that paragraph. Cause like, I think I'm not following this. Maybe something, <laughs> something went, no, no, that's, that's actually what they meant to say. Cause it's, maybe a, I need to draw a picture. <laughs> it's, it's a girl who's a guy now, sort of, but apparently not because he is still having his period. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, what? Oh, oh man. man. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the guy is pregnant and I, I don't know. It's just like you come up. It's insane. You insanity. come across sentences that don't make sense. And because they're fooling around with the pronouns so much, it makes it hard to follow in that sense, too. Exactly. Because. Because they like, can be one person now. Yeah. Because they is a plural pronoun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you're using it in a singular sense and then. And then coupled with the like non genderized stuff, it just it, especially when you're talking about more than one person. Yeah. yeah. It, it oh God, it was hard to follow. I bet. <laughs> and so that was frustrating in and of itself, because yeah. you know I'm I'm there's a lot of reading here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. But uh, yeah, I I think that there is there is this social like social upheaval kind of goal too. Yeah. Social and political upheaval yeah. um, goal. And, uh, and it's easier to recruit to a revolution, people who feel like they're outside the existing system and yeah. you're creating a new class of people. That's also outside the existing system. Yeah. Well, something else that's just kind of, it's crazy to me to like look back over the years. So I like, I remember, before gay marriage was like the uh, official when it was the fight was still going on that we need you know to have gay marriage and let this happen and everything and 
and I always thought it was absurd part of the argument that came from the conservatives. And they're like, well, what's next? Like, mm-hmm. then, then we're going to have girls and uh, all these other things are going to start becoming a thing. Yeah. And at the time when I was hearing those arguments, I was like, there's no way. Like, that's just ridiculous. Like, so what? Let women marry women. Who cares? Like, yeah. it's not that big a deal. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does feel like once that fight was over, this became the new, trans became the new fight. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny is like the marriage thing. I don't think the government should be a part of that at all anyway. Well, yeah. I mean, that's my stance. I mean, Ron Paul said that like years and years ago. And like when he's, when I heard him say that, I was like, dude, he nailed it. Like, yeah. You know. Why should there be laws one way or another about who, can man, marry I wish him? I had the quote of what, what he said too, yeah. because it was so like spot on. Like yeah. it was just yeah. it often is. Yeah. Well, I mean, because he, he referred to it as a contract. He was like, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm for, I forget, it was something along the lines of, I'm for voluntary contracts for anybody. And yeah. I don't care, you know, who it's between or yeah. something like It was very good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, um, and that's, so that's where my stance always been as far as gay marriage and whatnot. Just, like, just get the government out of it and you solve mm-hmm. all this on real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is funny that this is kind of where the fight has went. Is yeah. towards towards this type of thing, absurdity. <laughs> yeah, it. There's, I, I yeah, I don't know what to make of it. It's something completely different. The it has. Well, it, yeah, it, it has exploded, like the number of people that are claiming some kind of you know, gender queer, non-binary, transgender, whatever. I don't even know what gender queer means. Um, yeah, I don't think they don't, do. Yeah, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I mean, you get the LGBTQQIAAP. Yeah. And while I can identify all of those things, I don't know what they all mean. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's like three things that are real in there. Yeah. In that giant list of letters and numbers. Yeah. Um, but, and... and something that we've neglected to address here. And so like, maybe we have a plan for the next podcast because there's, because it's an important part of this is just the role, um, of social media and media in general, but social media specifically in, uh, in, this. in the social contagion yeah. a- aspect of this. Which talking about the social contagion thing, like I really kind of do feel like that that's part of what was going on during COVID anyway. Mm-hmm. Like that's how you had, all of this absurd stuff that was going on through COVID. Um, I think that was a big part of it, like social media and being able to just instant access to all of the stuff. And like when, when a whirlwind kind of kicks up, it just spins out of control. Yeah. Well, I was reading a little bit um, from this uh, uh, Zoomer girl um, who's in her early twenties Yeah. who is, was writing um, a lot about social media issues and, um, and, uh, I guess, uh, psychological issues with young people and, and so forth. And, um, one of the things that she had suggested is that particularly during the pandemic, um, that, that guys, young guys have a lot of social outlets online already. Yeah. Um, so when they weren't able to go out and, and meet with their friends and so forth, they're still playing games together online and, you know, doing things like that and socializing. That's true. That women didn't do that as much. And so when, when women weren't able to go out, young women weren't able to go out and meet with their friends and so forth. Instead, they're sitting like scrolling through Instagram and, you know, things like that instead, Hmm. which had more of an impact on their, their like self image. And yeah. so forth, especially now with, I mean, she was talking specifically, like, especially now with all the filters and so forth that people apply to make themselves look unnaturally beautiful. And now yeah. women who have f- had a lot of body issues for a long time yeah. um, are now confronted Being with, piled onto. yeah, are confronted with these like really unrealistic, like not even just like yeah. beautiful women that are really beautiful women, but unnaturally beautiful women because they don't actually even look like that. Yeah. Cause nobody looks like that. Yeah. That's, that's computer generated beauty. I, exactly. And yeah. yeah, with like really accentuated, um, features and anyway. Um, so I like, maybe that's something to address on the next podcast is, is just like a lot of the impacts of social media, because I think this is a dangerous thing. Yeah. And I, for me, um, if I had a teenager now, 
they wouldn't have a phone. Yeah. At, at least until they were 16. Um, yeah. when they were 16, they're driving that like now they'd have a phone just in case. But, yeah. um, but I think it like, if I had a 13, 14 year old, they wouldn't have a phone. Yeah. Um, I, and I would try and restrict social media as best I could. Problem is that you can't really keep them away from it either. Well, that's what I was fixing to say is, I mean, it's, it, it really is a hard thing because I get kind of where you're coming from on that mm-hmm. end, but on some level, I mean, they've got to be able to interact and adjust. Yeah, that is their social life now. And it that's is. That's a problem. Well, and it is a very serious problem, but the scenario you kind of laid out is... Go like, out and play in the street. <laughs> well, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. But um, but just the whole idea that, you know, you're going to make your child... You're going you're, you're gonna to hurt them just as much as you're helping them, I think. Mm-hmm. If you completely rip the social media like or not even rip but don't don't let them have that part of their development yeah um i think you're asking for trouble there too well uh, so in the there's end some truth to that i, I mean i like, think a balanced approach is what's needed um yeah uh, i'm not telling you it. my kids get that either by the way because <laughs> i'm just telling you right here right now like well, it's a one of them you don't have to you get you don't control anymore She's grown uh, up, sort of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny that you say that because when you said that, I was like, which one is he even talking about? <laughs> because I definitely feel like I have more control over one of them than the other. Yeah. And it's the yeah, older it's one the that I have the control up. over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anyway. Um, um, well, I don't know what I, the right I, answer you know, is. I know. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I, so, I don't know what the right answer is with the social media stuff, mm-hmm. especially with teenagers. I mean, I... I well, you, you have know. to, you have to kind of like, you're talking about a balance. You have to wonder, and, and this is like way too much to address right now, 57 minutes into this recording, <laughs> but yeah. um, like you have to wonder if the, the socialization that they're getting from social media is positive or negative too. Yeah. Um, because like you say, okay, well that's their entire social life. Not quite. I mean, it's no, close. Now, it's a but, big percentage, yeah, it's but a, it's, it's not it's, everything. I I, yeah. I understand this. It's a huge yeah. percentage now. But if it's yeah. if it's a negative socialization, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, and and that's like I said. That's. I mean, where there's you, a huge difference between texting your friends and like. Yeah. Scrolling through Instagram or TikTok or. Yeah. Well, and whatever. then you get into the whole cyberbullying thing, and mm. you know that type of deal too. So. Yeah. Like I say, I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. I don't have the answer. I'm, yeah. But I, I, I think it's worth addressing. So maybe we'll hit that on the next podcast. We'll spend yeah. some time on Well, we end up spending, media. I guess, the whole night on trans issues here. Yeah, you but said you wanted to talk about it. I was like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, just to kind of close out. I mean, I just... I want everybody to just kind of be cognizant of this stuff and don't, I mean, I ha, you can't not be like, I mean, it, this, we're just inundated with it, but like, just think about what we're watching out there in the world right now. Like, I mean, take a hard look at like what you see on the news and what you're seeing. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. and just, you know, I mean, every, I think this is kind of a, a rallying cry. Like we all need to pay attention and we all need to, because is as crazy as all of this is like it's not everybody that's buying into it but just yeah. like with just like with I the, think it's a small percentage I think it's a small like percentage really too well and it was the and same there's way. the whole put down of the same thing of like racism or whatever like you're a bigot yeah. and yeah. and that's one of the things that the all right I, I mean I hate to go back to the social media thing but Do it. one of the um one of the issues that kept coming up as I was reading through a lot of this stuff yeah. was uh, like the number of websites and so forth that help affirm these um, these transitioners, yeah, and uh, and how they teach them essentially that anyone that doesn't affirm yeah. their they're the their enemy. gender identity, yeah, they're the enemy, yeah. that they're bigots, that they're yeah. you know, like including parents, including I, I mean, it's yeah. just really, um, I mean, uh, it's and really this disheartening is, is what it was, but yeah. I mean, it, this is, it's being used as a weapon. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's what's going on here. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, let's talk about social media some next time. Cause I think that that's a really important topic and a, and a hard one to navigate as well. Yeah. Um, both internet and, and social media. Yeah. Um, 
And I, you know, I'm glad that we talked about this. And I, I think it's also important to remember that the that the people, like the trans, the trans people that are caught up in this, yeah, are yes, they are victims. Yeah, and, I, I think, and, and I in think a lot for, of ways, I think, and we need to remember that when we're when we're dealing with them as well, they are not the enemy. That's what I was fixing to say. Just because they're going to treat you like the enemy doesn't mean you need to respond in the same way. Yeah. Um, and I think that'll help solve a lot of this. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, because I I get the frustration, especially now there is an enemy here. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it's the people that are pushing this on the kids. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's where the now those people should be treated like an enemy. Well, but again, you have a lot of people that are very well meaning in this. I, I I agree. I think it goes higher up. I think that you. I I, I mean I don't know who it is. I I think that everybody needs to be dealt with with patience and understanding in this. I don't have um, a problem with that. Um, I don't, but. At the same time, I, I that's my like if real. If you're gonna focus on anybody, focus on politicians. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. Um, but I, 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 even more so though, I agree. And with maybe you. pharma execs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot of, lot of victims here, and we need to treat them that way. We need to treat them like the victims that they are. Yeah. You know? And even like parents here, you know, like. I think that this is a huge mistake to indulge this with your kids, but, um, but even the parents here, they're, I, I think that they're trying to do what they think is the best thing for their kid. Their kid is like, is probably like radically pushing for this. Yeah. Because of some of these websites and so forth. But I I mean, like what they're, what, what they're, uh, what they're dealing with is the kid that's saying, this is what I want. This is what I want. I can't live without this. I need this. I need this. I need this. Yeah. And like, so all of you parents out there that have bought that toy, even though you knew better before you left the store, because your kid would not leave it alone. This is the same kind of thing. I've bought that toy. So like (laughs) coming from someone who's bought the toy, yeah. (laughs) like I, I get, I get that. Um, and if you're in that one of those situations, the best thing I could tell you is to find out where the message is coming from. Yeah. Because if you have that kid that this is just, I, I, I want to do this, I want to do this, this is something like that message is coming from somewhere. That yeah. kid didn't just wake up one morning and come up with that. It's coming from one of these websites. It's coming from a teacher. It's coming, it's coming, coming from, from their social group. It could be their social group. It's coming because from somewhere. Because a lot of these connections are, yeah, we are really running long. Like, I don't know. I know. That, oh, man, I don't know that we can address this in a single episode. <laughs> Might have to come back to transgender stuff before we switch to social media on the next episode. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the uh, I mean, what they're finding a lot is that, you know, these girls that like when there's um, a bunch of girls uh, that are all wanting to transition in roughly the same space, yeah. they're in the same schools, they're in the same classes, they're yep. probably all friends with each other. That this is something that spreads through peers. It's a and contagion. Through social groups, yeah. I mean, it, it so. is a contagion. So if, if, I mean, that's that's the one thing I'll say to parents out there. Like, if this is something that you're grappling with or struggling with, like, mm-hmm. that's that's where you need to look, is where is it coming from? Because it's yeah. coming from somewhere, and you need to snuff it out. Yeah. Uh, so my recommendation is that if, um, if you're dealing with these issues with your child, and... Uh, your child's school is doing the affirming thing, yeah. um, encouraging them, helping them along, take yeah. them out of that school. Yeah. If their church is doing that, take them out of that church. Whatever yeah. group it is Wherever that is encouraging. it's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Take, remove them from it. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how you fix it. That's how you yeah, fix it. Yeah, because there's no other way. Yeah. That's how you fix the kid in the toy store, by the way, too. You take them out of the store. Yeah. <laughs> like it's the, it's the same thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, so yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, it's, this is something I worry about a ton. Like, cause I have, well, two teenage daughters, one in particular that the younger one is like coming up through this, you know? Yeah. Um, and so this is, this is something that keeps me I don't up. know that you have to worry about this particular issue with her. She is like very feminine. Oh, uh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I may never say that again in my life, but <laughs> after this conversation we've had here tonight, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So let's wrap it up. I've been trying to do like positive things at the end. Um, I think we finished on some positive advice. 
Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I won't try to come up with something. <laughs> I mean, I, I really do. Like, I mean, I, I think that's, um, I don't know. It's definitely something you can take with you. Yeah. 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 Get them, get them out the door. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, there's no particular plans I, that I'm aware of next week, so we should be good. I can't think of anything. Um, of course, it depends on when I can schedule my root canal. Yeah. Um, so if we're off next, or not off, we won't be off, but if we're not here at the same time next week, yeah, that may be, yeah. be a factor. I feel like I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling on weekends over then for a little while. So we'll have to get it done during the week. Yeah, yeah it's got to be Thursday or Friday, I suppose. Yep. All right. Well, um, so we, we plan to be next week. Uh, be back. Let me try that again. All right. We'll, we'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we plan to be back next week. In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, um, leave reviews. Five star only, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, and all that other stuff. Yeah. Tell your friends. That's that's always the best one. Word of mouth is the best. Absolutely. Yeah. Your friends trust you, hopefully. Not much yeah. of a friend if they don't. Yeah. Wow, that was rude. All right. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I got some friends that I don't trust. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll be back here next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later.